Uh, welcome, my name is Graham Galloway. I'm the chemistry lab coordinator for Chem 2302 and 2303. Today we're here to look at the uh, HPLC instrument that you'll be using in this lab uh, for a couple of different experiments. So the first part of the instrument that you need to be aware of is the computer and then this stack of uh, instruments. On the top we have the reservoir bottles. One of the things you'll want to do when you come into the lab is to make sure that the reservoir bottles that are connected to the instrument are the ones that you're going to want to use. Most of the time this will be done ahead, but it's always a good thing to check before you use an instrument. Then next you have the two pumps, A and B, and the detector. On the side here you have the injection port, guard column, analytical column, and on the back side of the uh, injection port you can see the sample loop. These are all the main components of the instrument. The uh, last part that we'll talk about in a little bit is the computer, uh, which we'll look at in a few minutes. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you come to this instrument to use it for an analysis is you're going to want to get the syringe. This is the one uh, that you'll be using. Uh, it's a very special syringe in that it doesn't have a point on this end of it. It's a flat point, so it'll differ from a GC syringe. And then the first thing you're going to want to do with that syringe once you've found it is you're going to want to rinse it 15 to 20 times with the solvent that you're going to be using for the experiment. And when you rinse the sample, it's as simple as putting the syringe in the solution, drawing up the solution, and expelling it to a waste container of some type. And as I said, you're going to do that 15 to 20 times. And 15. So once the syringe has been uh, rinsed with the sample, or with the solvent, the next thing you're going to want to do is to rinse it with the sample that you're going to use. And this will remove any possible dilution effects that come from the solvent. And here you just need to rinse it probably about once is fine. Then what you're going to do is you're going to load the syringe uh, with about 50 to, uh, 50 to 60 microliters of solution. And then that syringe will be ready for injection. So the next part is to set up the computer so that the computer is ready to do the injection. All right, so here you have the software running for the instrument. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to want to set up the instrument, uh, the components of the instrument here, um, so that it's running the right method that you're going to want. Uh, so depending on the course, you can talk to the TA or myself as your lab coordinator to help you get the instrument set up. But in this particular case, we're going to go into uh, the method set up for isocratic, and all we're going to do is we're going to change this 100 to 80%. Uh, which will change automatically. Once that's done, we can click OK. And then we want to say yes, we want to send the method to the instrument. The instrument will change its settings here. So it's now running 8020. And then we'll just need to wait a few minutes to allow the system to reach an equilibrium before we can actually do an injection with this case. A lot of the times when you come to the instrument for an experiment, It'll already be set up in terms of your first uh, run, so you don't have to wait time. But if you have to change the parameters of the program during the course of your experiments, then every time you change it, you're going to have to wait uh, three to five minutes to allow the system to reach a new equilibrium. So the instrument now is uh, showing the 8020 that we want. Uh, the pressure is good now, so it's uh, ready for us to do an injection. But the next thing that we need to do is we'll need to set this up so that we can tell uh, our data file from uh, other data files because this instrument automatically saves the data once it's collected. So you need to name your file. So you're going to want to go to this um, symbol up at the top here, the single syringe and sample. You're going to click that. And then we're going to change um, this name here to uh, unknown. Uh, sample one, and then it's a good idea to put your uh, name with it, just so that it's easier for you to find uh, to find your file uh, amongst a whole bunch of different files, because they could all be labeled unknown one, 
uh, but if you put your name on it, it's a lot simpler to find. Once you've got that done, you click OK. At this point in time, the instrument is now ready in order to do uh, an injection. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your syringe that you prepared with the sample, and what you're going to do is inside the um, injection port, there's a small little opening that the syringe will insert into, and it just goes in right like that, and you want to push it all the way in so that the syringe is all the way there, and the syringe will hang there by itself perfectly fine. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to inject the contents of the syringe onto the sample loop or into the sample loop. So we can just actually inject the contents of the syringe and that'll fill the sample loop on the back of the injection port. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the um, injection port from the load position to the inject position. And remember that load and inject on uh, injection port refers to the sample loop, not the syringe. So we've loaded the sample loop. Now we want to inject the contents of the sample loop onto the column, and we literally just have to turn it down like that. There is a switch inside the uh, injection port that registers when it's been turned and will trigger the computer to start recording data. So this will now run. Um, we can see down here on the screen that a little trace has started to record here. What we're going to do is we're going to wait for this time scale down here to reach about half a minute. And remember that half a minute is in uh, base 10, so it's going to be 0.5 of a minute. Once it reaches 0.5, we can turn the, turn the sample loop, take the syringe out. Now this sample will run through the instrument. This particular, uh, under these particular conditions, should only take about uh, three or four minutes, four to five minutes, maybe six minutes at the most. Um, and we'll get the data set out. Um, when, the, when the sample is done, uh, you can consult with your TA to make sure that it is done. They'll help you s stop the run. Uh, as I said, the run will automatically save and then you can print it so that you can take uh, a print away with you. Um, so we'll just let this run out on the computer, probably in a fast forward so that the students can see what it looks like. 